Hello and welcome to my not so short introduction to the new Avastar waiting tools. I will take the opportunity to tell you a few tips and tricks, although this might occasionally become a bit boring for the Blender nerds. However, I hope that you will find this video interesting enough to watch it up to the end. So, let's first introduce my working model, this pair of boots. Note that I use two modifiers for this model. And we have to take special care here because the second life skeleton does not work well with the mirror modifier, so we will apply it now. Next we will create a new Avastar character. And then adjust the boots to the rig. By the way, if your mesh is not perfectly symmetrical, then many of Blender's mirroring functions will fail. I will get back to this later when I introduce the weight copy tools. However, these boots are fine because they have been created with a mirror modifier. Actually I also apply an initial pose to the feet, so that they better match with the boots. This will give me slightly better initial weight values, however you may need to play a bit when you try this with your own attachment. As a rule of thumb I found, the better results are achieved when the meshes match up closer. Now we are ready to parent the shoes, please ensure that the Avastar armature and the object are both set to object mode. Then select the shoes and the armature. And just in case you have forgotten about that, you can select multiple objects by holding down the shift key and use the right mouse button for selecting more objects. By the way, the order in which you do this selection is not important. Right after you have selected the mesh and the armature, you will find the rigging options in the custom mesh panel within the tool shelf. This panel is used for parenting attachments to the rig, and when we enable the with weight copy option here, then Avastar will also copy the weights from the Avastar character to your boots. This will provide a reasonable initial weighting. But please be aware that any automatic weight copy method can only create an approximate solution, so you most probably have to fix the weighting later by hand. And I show you now how the new weighting tools can help you with this task. Let us ignore the other available rigging options for now, the default settings work well for our purposes. But before we proceed, please take a closer look at the parent to armature button. Here you see a small number enclosed in parentheses. This number indicates how many meshes will be parented. In our case this number is 1, because the boots are actually the only selected mesh object which currently can be parented to the armature. So you actually can parent multiple mesh objects in one single step. Ok, let us now call the parent to armature function. If you take another look at the rigging panel, then you see that it now contains a detach from armature button and you find another small number enclosed in parentheses. Now, this means that one of the selected objects can be detached from the armature, and you might have already guessed it, that's still the boots. And just for completeness, if you select multiple objects, then of course they can be detached in one single step as well. And this little number tells you how many objects will be affected. Ok, so for now we are happy with the parenting and we turn our attention to the next step, that is, improving the mesh weighting. Well, actually the boots have already been weighted automatically in the previous parenting step. And we can find the corresponding weight maps in the object data properties of the boots model. In Blender these maps are actually stored in vertex groups. Here, you see that Avastar has created four vertex groups, one for each of the involved second life bones. Please note that the second life importer insists to get vertex groups for all deforming skeleton bones. These extra groups will be added silently when Avastar exports your work. So you do not need to worry about that. Avastar will take care and do this job for you. Now finally, let's head over to weight painting. So, first select the armature and set it to pose mode. I will also reset the skeleton to the rest pose, to ensure that we start in a well-defined position. 
Now select the boots and set them to weight paint mode. You may have noticed that selecting the mesh object can sometimes become a challenge, but you always have the outliner as an alternative option for selecting. You will find the boots as a child of the Avastar rig, and you can select them by left click on the corresponding outliner entry. As soon as we have entered weight paint mode, the boots turn entirely blue. This indicates they are not weighted to the currently selected bone. But note, we currently see only the green control bones which are mainly used as controllers for the animation, they are not weighted, thus they appear in blue. So, where can we find the weights then? Well, the weights are normally associated to the second life skeleton, but this part of the rig is currently hidden, and we need to uncover them now. However, since waiting is a major task in your project, we have added preset buttons to the bones display panel. One preset for waiting, and one for animating. So instead of adjusting the rig manually we just select the wait preset, and we are immediately ready to go. Let us do a quick check what the preset has changed. Apparently it has unhidden the second life bones, and it has hidden the control bones. It also has unlocked rotation constraints, which otherwise would have protected the skeleton from manual modifications, and finally, it has enabled the X-ray mode for the bones. By the way, if you do not like the default look of the bones, then you can as well change the bone display type from the default octahedron shapes to stick shapes. Furthermore you can switch back to the default settings by clicking on the animation preset button at any time. But let us keep the weight preset for now. Let's switch to the local view by pressing the percent key on the keyboard. And here is another side note, if you select at least one bone before you go to local view then the skeleton will keep visible as well. Now our display looks clean and organized and we can proceed with our main task, that is, checking the weights. Basically we do that by posing the skeleton and then examine how the mesh reacts. And, very important, please do not forget to switch back to the animation preset after you have finished your waiting task. Otherwise the green control bones won't work anymore as expected. You also must be aware that the second life bones will snap back to the green control bones as soon as the animation preset is enabled again. Well, then let's examine now how Avastar has initialized the weights during parenting the boots. Select the right ankle, and rotate it towards its extreme positions. You see that it is not all that bad. However we could improve the weighting a bit. But let's turn to the other boot and check if it behaves in the same way. Here you see the distortions are bigger. And in fact a close inspection shows that the weights of both boots are different. This is not caused by Avastar. In fact this asymmetric weighting is one of the weird features of the default Second Life avatar. For this sort of problems we have added another function into the tool shelf, Mirror from Opposite Bones. This function works reliably on all of the Avastar bones, and it is used as follows. Select the bones which contain the wrong data. In our case, this are the left ankle and knee bone. Then locate the mirror from opposite bones function in the tool shelf. Now the weights are mirrored from the opposite bone, as you can verify by direct comparison. But please take care, if your mesh is not symmetrical along the x-axis, then the mirror copy will not work on your attachment. Note that it is not sufficient when the mesh just looks symmetrical. It really must maintain precise mirror symmetry. You can fix that by first deleting half of your mesh, then add a mirror modifier, and finally apply the modifier. Well, 
Sometimes we want to restart our waiting from the beginning, thus we might want to completely unweight one or more bones. You can do this by deleting the corresponding vertex groups in the object data properties. But removing vertex groups is not at all recommended. So we added another option for cleaning up vertex groups. The Remove Weights tool. This function removes all vertices from the selected groups, but keeps the groups themselves available for later use. Select the bones which you want to reset. And remember that you can hold down the Shift key and use the right mouse button to select multiple bones. Then locate the Remove Weights function. You see that it has worked when the mesh color turns to blue. So, we have added yet another copy tool, copy from rigged. This function copies the weights from all other meshes which have been parented to the armature, like for example the Avastar base shapes. We use this function by first selecting all the bones to which we want to copy the foreign weights. Then we call copy from rigged. Please note that this copy option uses all visible meshes as weight sources, provided they are also attached to the same armature. That is indicated by the number in parentheses. In our case that is the number of currently visible Avastar meshes on the rig. Please remind that we currently do not see the other meshes because we have enabled local view. So, let's get back to global view for a moment. For our boots it is convenient to take only weights from the lower body part of the character, because we probably want to avoid to get any weight information from other parts like the eyes or the head. However Avastar's weight copy is clever, and it normally gets its task done even when all of the Avastar meshes are visible. But let us become very picky for a moment, and hide all meshes except the lower body. We can now call the weight copy function right away, but we also can first switch back to local view. The weight copy will work in either case. But hold on, this is interesting, take another look at the weights. That looks familiar, doesn't it? So, we have seen these weights before, and indeed, the very same copy function was called when we did the mesh parenting. That is, when you enabled the parenting option with weights. Do you remember? So, during the mesh parenting with weight copy the entire set of target bones received weights. But now you can tell exactly which bone shall be affected by the copy. So you can decide for example to copy only to one single bone, or you can select all of the bones and get the exact same results as you got previously from the mesh parenting with weight copy. Okay, so there is one more copy option available, the selected to active copy. This is actually a bone to bone copy, which can be used for example when we get into weighting of collision volumes. And here is an example for doing that. First we want to enable the visibility of the collision volumes, and we do that in the show bones panel. Now we must know that each bone has a deforming flag. When this flag is set, then the bone weights are used to move the mesh along with the bone. And when the flag is not set, then any weights on the bone have no effect at all. By default, only the second life bones are flagged as deforming bones. But let's ignore this for a moment and proceed. We will come back to this topic in a minute. Well, now we can start weight painting the collision volumes by hand. But there is another option which may have certain value for your project as well. There is a bone-to-bone -bone copy option that can be used to copy the weights from any bone to any other bone. And we can make use of this function as follows. First select the source bone, in our case the second life bone. Then hold down the shift key and use the right mouse button to select the corresponding collision volume. Now. Locate the selected to active function. You find it in the tool shelf. Note that this function always operates on exactly two bones. Hence we have to do a separate bone to bone copy for each bone pair.
After we have copied the weights over to the collision volumes, we can safely remove the weights from the second life bones. However, when we now test our weighting, then we see that the boots no longer react on the bone movements. This is so because we have just removed all weights from the second life bones, and the collision volumes which indeed have weights, are by default not marked as deforming bones. Thus right now not a single bone of the entire bone set can influence the boots. And this is where the deforming option comes into play. That is, we need to enable the collision volumes for deforming. We do that by first selecting all collision volumes. Then we locate the bone deform panel. And there we enable bone deform. And when you now try to pose the boots, then you see that they react again on the bone movements. Note that this happens although the second life bones are now completely unweighted. And the good news is, the Avastar exporter knows how to turn this into a valid export file for second life. Hence when you now export the boots to second life, then they not only move along with the mesh as expected but they also react on the avatar shape sliders in the second life viewer. I am now at the end of my little introduction and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And, thank you for watching.